Hi, this is Scott Dudley, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can set up a time series chart to, uh, to view trends in Looker Studio. So this is just an example of one that I've created previously. It's got four separate time series charts on top of each other. This is for my YouTube channel. So basically what we'll do in this video is we will recreate this chart here and we'll add a date control filter. And then I'll show you what it looks like with multiple metrics combined on the same uh, chart. So this is just a new page here. So what we want to do is click on add a chart and then you'll see here time series and the first option here. So that's the one that we want. And we click on that. Add this to the canvas, just make it a bit bigger. And by default, it has added the date dimension and the total watch time as the metric. So for the dimension, it must always, always be a date uh, or a timestamp, because obviously otherwise the time series chart won't work. If you try to put any other dimensions on here, um, the, it, it won't display properly. So make sure you use a date as a dimension. The metric can be whatever you like. So in this case, it's the total watch time. Um, and then we will add a date range control. So if we click on add a control and then date range control, we'll just add this in here, make it a fraction larger. And then it's asking here for the default date range. I usually like to go for the last 30 days, but you can do whatever you want. Basically what this means is that every time the user opens up the report, it will automatically default to this date range. But of course the user is able to choose their own dates. So they can either choose one of these pre-built uh, combinations in here, or if they wanted to choose their own date, then they can just go in here and let's say from the 2nd of August to the 14th of August, we'll click on apply. And it's got August 2 to August 14 in here. So then if I go back into edit view, um, and let's say we wanted to replicate this, then all I need to do there is uh, right click copy, and then right click paste. And then we can drag this one down. We can use a different metric for the second chart. Um, let's say average view percentage, and let's make it a different color. And we can do that by clicking on the style tab up the top here. And then uh, under the series color, we can click on, let's make it red. Uh, and there we go. And then another good option that we've got in here is to show the points. Okay, so that shows the data points for each day. So if we go back to my other example here, you'll see that these have the data points on, on each chart. And we've got that on here as well. Um, you can also show the data labels, which shows the actual values for each day. But for, for me, it look, just looks too cluttered. So I keep those off, I show the points, and then the user can just mouse over each point and they can easily see the actual number. So on this one, let's also show the points. And then what you can also do is rather than having um, like separate charts for each different metric, you can combine multiple metrics on the same chart. So to do that, you would just add a second metric here. Let's say average watch time. And it's... Um, the average watch time is in yellow, the average view percentage is in red. As you can see here, uh, it doesn't look great because the average view percentage is so low and the average watch time is so high. So um, that's why sometimes it's better to keep your charts separate so it's one metric per chart. However, if you've got metrics that are comparable and you want to look at um, a comparison between the two, then you can add more than one metric to the chart and you can see the difference between the two. Uh, and if you just mouse over each day, once again, it will show you the amount for, for both metrics. So that's pretty much it for the time series chart. Uh, if you've got any other suggestions on videos that 
you'd like me to create, just let me know in the comments. Thanks.